be that of Brother Andre or Norwood. Amen. It's Amen. not in the songbook. I already look. As I journey through the lands and singing as I go, I am falling souls to Calvary and on through the fields of gold. Oh, the arrows pierce my soul from without. All right, church, say amen. Amen. Once again, we're excited about the opportunity to be in the house of God, Amen. the privilege that God has granted to you and I. Uh, God has seen you and I in our feeble and our undone condition. God has smiled upon us graciously, causing our golden moments to roll on just a little bit further. Amen. But for that, we are eternally grateful. In deference to time, I'll make as much an effort as possible to get right into my message. I'm thankful for all of you who have come out, uh, those who are members of the body of Christ, members of the Church of Christ. Uh, we welcome you here uh, from other congregations, mm -hmm. but especially those who are not members of the Church of Christ. Right. Uh, right. We especially welcome you uh, to this assembly of God's people that meet on Elm Street. Mm -hmm. and you're going to have a good time on Elm Street. Come on. Right. I know there was a movie called A Nightmare on Elm Street. <laughs> uh, but you're going to have a good time on Elm Street. Yeah. I want you to 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 work with me. I'm going to try to slow down. I've been preaching kind of hard. And tonight and tomorrow night, I want to take my time and make sure take your time. that take your time. Uh, that there is no misunderstanding yes. about uh, uh, what I'm trying to communicate. Come on. Sometimes in the in the in homileticals and and in the art of preaching and communicating. Uh, your, your tongue gets to moving fast, or sometimes things don't necessarily come out uh, the way you thought in your mind. So I want to make sure I take my time, and I want to share with you uh, some things from the Word of God that will, I believe will uh, shed some light on the issue of the Church of Christ. Amen. It's place in the divine purpose of God. Come on, come on. Come on. The Church of Christ. Yeah. It's place in the divine purpose of God. That's all right. I want you to understand that, as we said last night, when the Bible uses the word ecclesia, uh, in Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, Jesus said, Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell, the gates of Hades, shall not prevail against it. Uh, the word that he uses is ecclesia. It is a word that he uses for the first time in the religious sense, come on, come on. Uh, meaning the called out. Mm -hmm. And those who have been called out of the world right, have been called into God's marvelous life. Uh, he says that it is going to be the ecclesia of Christ. Yeah. It is going to be the church of Christ. This, this body, this, this called out group of individuals mm -hmm. uh, will be unique. And they will be different. Come on. Uh, the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, come on. Yeah, come on. he is a new creature. Amen. He is a new creation. Mm -hmm. I want to preface it by having you understand that every creature mm -hmm. that God created was created in the Genesis creation account. Come on. Come on. There was no evolution. Come on. It was creation. Come on. Amen. God Amen. The Bible says, Rashif Elohim et Bara. Uh -huh. In the beginning, yeah, that's it. God created. Yeah. The word Elohim there is the plural form of God. Mm -hmm. It is the first mentioning of God in the Bible. That's right. And it speaks of the divine Trinity of God. That's right. The word the Bible uses is the Godhead. Yes. They that possess the divine nature. So in the very beginning, Elohim, the creator, the self-sustaining, all-sufficient creator God, 
spoke all things into existence. Well, now, when you understand that when you want to know the nature of something, come on. you've got to know how it was intended in the very beginning. That's right. When God uh, thought of the church, he thought of the church in singular terms. Thank you. Thank you. This idea of, Thank you. of multiple churches, no. denominational churches and religious division no, brother. is foreign to the Bible. Thank you. Thank you. And it is foreign to the mind of God. Amen. I want you to understand that God is, is an infinite God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We have to be careful that we don't think about God like we think about people. God says my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. God, God is an infinite God. There is no boundaries to the mind of God. God is all-knowing. God is all-powerful. But God created man. Man is a finite being. Man has limited capabilities. Limited understanding. So when God wants to communicate from an infinite mind to a finite mind. God speaks in singular terms. We can't handle much more than that. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? Uh, it's hard enough sometimes to do, do just the one thing we were told to do. And it's amazing how we want all this division and we have a hard time just being the one that God calls us to be. I want to take you to the garden or to a, to a, to a place prior to Jesus going into the gardens in John chapter 17 as a launching pad mm -hmm. into our lesson tonight. And I'm going to need some readers tonight. Yes, sir. I'm going to need you, you to labor with me and I'm going to need you to follow along in your Bibles as I share this stuff. The church of Christ is placed in God's uh, divine plan. Yes, and I want you to see that that when Jesus was at the shadow of the cross wow. in John chapter 17 he prays to his father. Mm -hmm. And he says, Father, the hour mm -hmm. has now come. Yeah. Yes, sir. Glorify thy son with the glory that he had with you mm -hmm. from the beginning. Yes. Jesus' mind goes back to his pre-incarnation. His mind goes back before he was manifest yes. in the flesh. That's right. Amen. His mind goes back to a time in eternity. Come on. Before God created the heavens and the earth. Come on. Before God created the angels. Yeah. Come on. There was a time when it was just the Father, Come on. the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And there was a glory that only the Godhead had. Well. And Jesus has, according to Paul in Philippians, has considered that glory not a thing to be clean to. Come on. But he released it. Come on. He gave up, he emptied himself for the sake of becoming like man. Come on. That he may die for the sins of man. Amen. But in this, this place of prayer, mm -hmm. Jesus says in John chapter 17, verse 20. All right. yeah. He says, neither pray I for these alone after having prayed for his apostles. Come on. Come on. But I pray also for them that shall believe on me mm -hmm. through their word. Listen to the words of Jesus. That's it. He says, not only from verse 1 to verse 19, he's praying for his apostles. Mm -hmm. But when he gets to verse 20, he says, God, I'm not praying just for the apostles. Yeah. But I'm also praying for everyone that's going to believe on me. Mm -hmm. on a, or in accordance with or through their word. Mm -hmm. What we learn here is that Jesus wants us to believe on him yeah. in a specific way. Yes. That is, he wants us to believe on him uh -huh. according to the words of the apostles. Yeah. 
the apostles wrote the New Testament. Yeah, right. So Jesus is saying that I'm not just praying for my apostles, yeah. but I'm praying for everyone who believes on me according to the teaching of the New Testament. Yeah. Like what Jesus says is that if you're going to have faith in me, yeah. that faith must be based on the teaching yeah. of the New Testament. Yeah. That's why in the Church of Christ, we do not go to the Old Testament to find the rules of our faith yeah. and the dictates of our worship to God. Yeah. Because Jesus says that faith in me yeah. must be based on the words of the apostles. Yeah. And the apostles did not write the Old Testament. Yeah. So we learned then, just that quick, we learned why in the Church of Christ, we don't run the Psalms 150 yeah. no. to use instruments come when we come to worship come God Almighty. Come we on. understand that whatsoever things were written aforetime yeah. were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Yeah. But we also understand that those things are not the dictates for the faith of the church of Christ. Yeah. We understand mm -hmm. that we see how God how God dealt with man in other dispensations yeah. and how God related to man in other dispensations. We learn of God's grace even in the Old Testament. For the Bible says that Noah found grace with God. We learn that when God says what he says, God means what he says when we see us are touching the ark. We understand that when God makes a promise, God keeps his promise when we read about Abraham. We understand that God will not strive with man forever because man is also flesh when we read about the flood in the Old Testament. We understand how Christ is the, is the fulfillment of all the Old Testament articles yes. that we read about. Everything we read about in the yes. Old Testament is just a shadow. It is just a prefigure yes. of the Christ who will come and offer himself. His blood is better than that of bulls and of goats. Yes. He is our Passover. He is our rest. He is our Sabbath. He is our spiritual rock. Yes. He is our spiritual drink. Yes. Jesus is the ram in the bush. Yes. Jesus is the only begotten Son of God. We learn all of that when we read the Old Testament, but when it comes to our worshiping God and God Almighty, we turn to the New Testament because the New Testament is the last will and testament of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, as we just read in John chapter 17, verse 20. Well, what is it that Jesus wants? In verse 21, he says, that they, Father, may be, might be one in us. As our Father art in thee, as thou art me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us. Come on, come on. That the world, yeah. watch what he says, that, that is actually so that the world might believe that thou hast sent me. That's it. The reason why. Mm -hmm. There's one of the reasons why there's so many people who have just given up on Christianity. Mm -hmm. Come on. It's because they see so much division yeah. Yeah. amongst those who profess <laughs> to be Christian. Amen. They see so many people on Sunday. You know, they say that in America, <laughs> Sunday morning is the most divided day. <laughs> it is the most divided day. Come on, people that work together don't worship together. Yeah. Wouldn't it be great if everybody would just do what God said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I will plead in the Church of Christ, and I want to make—I'm trying to make some things clear. We got a lot of visitors. Make it clear. Make it clear. Our plea mm -hmm. is that men and women would put off the shackles of man-made tradition yeah, listen, and listen. go back to the Bible. Yes. Right. Go back to doing what God said do. Yeah. Put away man-made dogmas and creeds yeah. and simply be what they were in the Bible. Yeah. Don't be a Baptist, Methodist, Pentecostal, Jehovah's Witness, Lutheran, Mormon, Seventh-day Adventist, uh -huh. Catholic, and, and First Baptist, Southern Baptist, Full Gospel Baptist, uh -huh. and all of these different things. Just be a Christian. Yeah. 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 That's all we're asking. We're asking that men. You, you see, oh, it's so. See, I have to. I, I try. I try to. I try to behave, but I just have so much in my mind. Come on, come on. 
Come on. You know, let, let's see if we can get this. Let's see if we can get this. Here. Come on, Noah. Take your time. Go to Ephesians. Mm -hmm. Chapter 3. Mm -hmm. You know where to go. I'm going to start in Ephesians chapter 3. I, 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 we looked at this last night. And we talked about, yeah. we talked about the mystery. Y'all yeah. right. remember that? Yeah. And we said the mystery is something that is hidden. Yeah. Or hidden. That must be revealed. Y'all yeah. remember that? Yeah. And so... When we start talking about the church, if there's a mystery, mm -hmm. something that is hidden, that must be revealed, well. I believe that because God is a good God, mm -hmm. that God gave man clues uh -huh. along the way. Yeah. God gave man clues so that man could, could slowly begin to understand what it is that God wanted him to do. Yes. And then once God fully revealed it, man would have an aha moment. You know, some of us used to, I used to be an African Methodist Episcopal. Well, well. An African Methodist Episcopal is a person who is of African American descent, who is a member of the denomination uh, of the Methodist Church, well, but the Methodist Church uh, would not allow African Americans full fellowship, well, so they started the African Methodist Episcopal Church. Right. Now, the African Methodist Episcopal Church is a peculiar kind of church yeah, because yeah. you had to be African American to be a member of it. Well, well, listen, if, that, if that ain't something, uh, then I don't know what else is. Yeah. To think that there's a church yeah. uh, that says you have to be of a certain race well, well. to be a member of it. Well. I find Jesus saving uh, a Gentile in Acts chapter 10, uh, uh, the centurion by the name of Cornelius. I find him saving an Ethiopian in Acts chapter 8, uh, an Ethiopian eunuch. I find that same Jesus saving a Jewish man in Acts chapter 9 by the name of Saul of Tarsus. I stop by to tell you that his saving grace is from every race and it's the same Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus doesn't just say black folks. He doesn't just say white folks. He don't just say rich folks. He don't just say poor folks. All of us are going to be saved by the same Jesus. Jesus tasted death for every man. And that's what I said when I said last night about building walls. We got to quit building walls when Jesus is in the building to tear down a wall. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, we, and, and as soon as Jesus tear down a wall, we go right back and build a wall. Preach it. We got to quit building walls. Well, well Jesus has torn them down. Oh, now, there are some walls. Mm -hmm. When we read Revelation, there are some walls yes, to are. keep some stuff out. But in the church, there are no walls. There's neither male nor female. There's neither bond nor free, nor Greek nor barbarian. We're all one in Christ Jesus. Yes, yes. Yes. Listen, it doesn't matter if you're rich, poor. It doesn't matter if you drive a Lexus or if you drive a Yugo. They don't even make Yugos no more, do they? <laughs> Y'all remember the Yugos? Yugos was cheap because all you got was a motor and four tires. You want a radio? You go get it. You want air conditioner? You go get it. Listen, in Ephesians chapter 3, you ready to read, Kenji? I want you to start at verse number 1. That's it. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles. Now. Paul writing to the Ephesians, they were Gentiles, and I told you last night that these, these Ephesians felt like second class citizens in the kingdom of God because they didn't have the heritage. Yeah. Because they, they couldn't say our fathers uh, were in the wilderness with Moses. They, they didn't have the, the history that the Jews had. And, and the Jews flaunted that over them. Uh, the Jews flaunted their, their rich heritage over them, that they had been with God all along. They didn't flaunt the fact that they had sinned against God and rebelled against God. They didn't bring that up. They just talked about our fathers and our, and our great history. And they flaunted that. So Paul, Paul, in writing this letter to the Ephesians, uh, wanted to help them understand that you're not, you're not a whit bit different. Listen, You're not a whit bit different Come on, brother. than those Jews. Yes, sir. In fact, you are chosen, you are accepted, you are adopted 
In fact, you have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. You have everything. You have all spiritual blessings Amen. in Christ Jesus. And then he went on to show them that even as Gentiles, even as people in the United States of America, you are not a second thought to God. You are always in the mind of God. It is called the mystery. Yeah, yeah. The mystery. And that's what I'm going to unfold unto you. That the mystery was that the Gentiles and the Jews were always going to be united in Christ in one church. God did not plan to have a Jewish church and a Gentile church. And I'll stop by to tell you, if he didn't plan to have a Jewish church and a Gentile church, he didn't stop by to have a Baptist church and a Methodist church and a Pentecostal church and a Holiness church and a Mormon church and a Seventh-day Adventist church and a Catholic church. Jesus only has one church. You cannot divide. Thank you. What God has not divided. Any man who takes it upon himself to divide what God has not divided has exalted himself to a dangerous position. Because this man is saying that what I have started is just as good as what God has started. And that's a dangerous position to take. That's a dangerous position to take. Now watch what the Bible says. Read. If ye have heard of the dispensation of, of the grace of God, which is given, given me to your... Now I want to avoid some of that. There's a lot of teaching in there talking about the stewardship of grace that was given to Paul. But I want to, I want to get on to something else. Read. How that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery. Now Paul says... Revelation. I hope I spelled that right. If I didn't, y'all forgive me. I'm right. trying to move on. <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> it's close enough. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. Paul said that this mystery has been revealed to him by what? Revelation. revelation. By revelation. Revelation is a process in which God has revealed something to Paul. Paul didn't have to go to school to get it. Yeah. Paul didn't have to study to get it. God gave it to him. I don't know if God gave it to him in a vision. I don't know if God gave it to him in a dream. I don't know if God, if he went in a trance and God gave it to him. But however he got it, Paul said that it was supernaturally revealed to him. Now watch what Paul said. Come on. As I wrote a four in few words. Now Paul said, now I've already written about this before or previously in a few words. Now let's go to Ephesians chapter 1. And I want you to see where Paul began to write about that. Remember we looked at Ephesians chapter 1 when we talked about the spiritual blessings that is in Christ Jesus. I stopped uh, before I got to verse 9. Because when we get to verse 9, I want to show you one of the greatest blessings that God has given us. And when you understand this here, it helps you then to conform your thinking to the mind of God. God is an infinite God. You have a finite mind, but God reveals information, and when he does, you have to conform your thinking to the thinking of God. Yeah. God will not change his mind. Yeah. Uh-huh. We've got to change our mind. Yeah. Yeah. And the problem with man is we are so arrogant that we think that, that we can live how we want to live. We can do what we want to do, and somehow God is going to change his mind. Yeah. But uh-huh. God does not change his mind. Mind. God is sovereign. God is omnipotent. We must conform to the will of God. We must submit to the will of God. Am I making sense tonight? You can't, God, listen, God is not a respecter of persons. God is not going to hold the whole world accountable to his word, but let you off the hook. Listen, listen. Come on. See, 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 when I say that, folks look at me funny like we don't get that. It gets quiet. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know, people sell drugs, right? Yes, sir. And they see everybody selling drugs get caught. Mm-hmm. Right. But for some reason, they think they can do it right. yeah. and not get caught. Yeah. <laughs> Listen. You understand what I'm saying? It, that's how arrogant we are. Everybody else has tried to do it, got, didn't get away with it. But for some reason, every one of us men, we seem to think that we can do it and not get caught. Right. Well, right. well. Now watch what Paul says in verse 9. Wait, start at verse number 8. Wherein he has abounded towards us in all wisdom and prudence. Now, he says God has abounded toward us in all wisdom and understanding. Read. Having made known unto us. Having made known. Watch this now. Having made 
known, made known, must be revealed. So Paul says that something has been made known. Come on. Something that was hidden yeah. has been made known. Now once it's made known, man no longer has an excuse well, for not doing it. Amen. Once man knows, once God reveals it, yeah. man is now accountable for it. We read in the garden that Jesus said that they all may be one. Yeah. How can anyone who loves Jesus, mm -hmm. how can anyone who wants to serve Jesus know that on his deathbed, well, he prayed for unity? Yeah. How can anyone see that Jesus is praying to his father that all of his followers would be one? Mm -hmm. How can anybody then turn around and say, it's okay to be divided into different denominations. Well, mm -hmm. Come on, come on. No way. Jesus goes to the cross yeah. with one thought on his mind. Let them be one. Amen. Amen. I guess someone says, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Join the church of your choice. Well. Jesus says, let them be one. Mm -hmm. Paul says, he's made known mm -hmm. unto us what? Have been made known unto us the mystery of the his mystery yeah. of his will. What is it? According to his good pleasure. Now, now, now watch this. This is according to what? His good, his good pleasure. pleasure. This will, Brother Addison, was according to God's good pleasure. Yeah. This tells me that God did not confer Thank you. with flesh and blood. Thank you. God did not confer with any man Thank you, and ask any man what he thought about this plan. This plan has it or its origin with God. All right. This plan was planned by God before the foundation of the world. Thank you. God had already decided right. what he's going to do. And believe me, when God sets his mind to do something, yeah. God is going to do it. Yes. You can either get with God's plan or get left behind. All right. All right. All right. The problem with men, the problem with men is we think that God is going to change his plan because we're so smart, because we went to college, because we got an education, or because we got so much money in the bank account that we're going to convince God to change his plan. But when God says, I'm going to do something, God cannot lie. God will do what God said he's going to do. Let me see if I can move a little faster right over here. What is the mystery? Come on. Which he had purpose in himself. He purposed. I like to say he proposed. <laughs> he, he, he proposed. He purposed. His eternal purpose. Come on. He said he came up with it. When he was by himself. Mm -hmm. He didn't consult with anybody. Thank you. Thank you. This is God's plan. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And who are you to change God's plan? Yeah. Well, no. He purposed it in himself. What is it? That in the dispensation of the fullness of time. That in the stewardship of the fullness of time. He might gather together. That is the church age. We're living in the fullness of time. That's it. What is God going to do in the fullness of time? Uh -huh. There was a dispensation called the patriarchal yes. dispensation. There was a dispensation called the Mosaic yes. Dispensation. Yes. And now we're living in what is known as the Christian That's Dispensation. Yes. It is in the Christian Dispensation yes. where God has given the stewardship over this king, over this world yes. to Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Yes. And the Holy Spirit is indwelling in man. Jesus is reigning as king over yes. man. Yes. He's king of kings yes. and lord of lords. This is the final roundup of yes. human affairs. Yes. Jesus is slowly but surely bringing this world yes. to an end. Yes. You wonder what the world is coming to. Yes. The world is coming yes. to an end. Yes. Paul said evil men shall watch worse and worse. Yes. Deceiving and being yes. deceived. Right. This world is going to get so bad yeah. that we're going to be saying, Lord, hurry up and come. Yeah. Yeah. This world is going to hell and not in a picnic basket, yeah. but in a gallon of gasoline. Yeah. This world is going to be destroyed. So the Bible says, save yourself from this crooked, this perverted, this untoward generation. And there's only one place where you can find salvation. And that salvation is in Christ Jesus. I'm trying to get there tonight. I'm trying to get there. Read. That in the in the dispensation. I like to come back up. Watch out, bro. Can you find it? Is it in your Bible? That in the dispensation.
conversation. Oh, the phone is a time. He's got to do what? Gather He's got to do what? Gather together. He's got to gather together how many? In one. In one? All in things. In five? All in things. In ten? One. He's got to gather together in one. one. All things all in things. Christ. So this is the mystery. Yes. God is going to gather. Is going to. That's G O N N A. Together. Together. In one. God is only going to have one. He's a God who deals with one. Get for me. John chapter 10, verse 16. I want you to see that God deals in one. And when you understand that God is dealing with one, we're going to deal with this one for just a minute. God deals with one. Can I get a read of John chapter 10, verse 16? Jesus talking to some, some Jewish uh, people here who are under the law. But Jesus is going to lead these people that he's talking to. His goal is to lead them from under the law into the new covenant with God, but he doesn't just want to bring them. Jesus has somebody else on his mind. Right. And I want you to know it there, Georgia, that you are part of that crew Amen. that Jesus had on his mind. Yeah. I told you when Jesus, when God made this plan, God didn't just look at it from the beginning. God looked all the way down through time. Oh, yeah. Look all, right. all the way down through time. Read about it. And other sheep I had. Jesus said, and other sheep I had. Which are not of this fold. Which are not of this fold. This which fold. are not of the Jewish fold. Uh -huh. Jesus says, I've got some other sheep. Yes. I've got some other people. They're not of the Jewish fold. What have I got to do with them? Them also I must bring. Jesus says, I have a necessity. I've got to bring them to what? And they shall hear my voice. They're going to hear my voice. And there shall be one. There fold. shall be one what? Fold. One fold. The word fold there is symbolic of the church. And Jesus says, I'm going to bring those Gentiles in. He yeah. says, he's talking to the Jews. He says, I got some other sheep. They're Gentiles. I'm going to bring them also. And there's going to be one church. I want you to understand, God never planned to have two. He yeah. only planned to have one. You need to go back to Ephesians chapter 3. God is only going to have one. Come he on. said, these Jews, I'm going to bring them too. This is another clue. Yes, yeah. sir. This is another clue. Priest, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Go back to chapter 3. Mm -hmm. Paul said in verse 4. Whereby. Whereby when you read. Ye may understand my knowledge. In the mystery of Christ. Christ. Read. Which in other ages was not made known unto read. the sons of men. Read. As it is now revealed unto his holy apostles uh -huh. and prophets by the Spirit. Uh -huh. That the Gentiles should there be fellow heirs. And of the same body. So Amen. now why don't you say the Gentiles. And Jews, come on, come on, in the same body. Now, what is this word body here? This word body here is a term that Paul uses that speaks about the church. Now, let's see, let's let's, let's prove that real quick. I guess you can go to Ephesians chapter 1, uh, verse 20 and 21, or you go to Colossians chapter 1, uh, verse 18. It doesn't matter to me which one you go to, they're both going to say the same thing. Which one you got? I got Ephesians chapter 1. Read that. Uh, and have put all things under his feet. And have put and, and which <laughs> and have put all, all things under his feet. And power and might and dominion and every name that is named. Uh -huh. Not only in this world, uh -huh. but also in that which is to come. Read. And have put all things under his feet. That's where I want you to be. God has put all things under his feet. Come on. Read. And gave him to be the head over all things. And gave him, him who Christ, to be the head over all things. To the church. To the church. Thank you. Now watch this. Thank you. Watch this. In English, I don't, I don't know the proper stuff now, but I, I take your time, brother. That's all, all right. right. When you see a comma, yeah. When you see a word a nine, yeah. And then a comma, and another nine, uh -huh. then another comma. Whatever's between those two commas is telling you about the last nine that came before the comma. Right. Come, come, on. come on. So he said all things. To the church, come, mm -hmm. which is his body. Uh -huh. His body is the church. That's it. Uh -huh. Ephesians chapter 4, uh, verse number 4. Let's see how many bodies Jesus had. There he, is one body. The Bible says there is one body. Uh -huh. If the body is the church, yeah. and the church is the body. Yeah. The Bible says there is one body. Because there's one body, that means there's one church. 
If there's one body, that means there's one church. Amen. Now the question is, can that one body be divided into different denominations? Ain't that the question you got tonight? Amen. Don't you want to know if you can do that scripturally? Yeah. Can you divide it? Get me First Corinthians chapter 1. Oh, preacher. You teach it. Verse 10. Y'all all right with this? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Preacher, you teach it. I'm, I'm trying to show you that God never intended never, never. for there to be more than one church. Now, preach, brother. God never. Now the Bible says there's one body. Let's say that this circle, mm -hmm. oh, that's a bad circle. <laughs> that's all right, bro. That's all right. We understand. You know, I'm not, no, Brother Iverson, I'm not one of them old school people. I'm not used to the blackboard. I'm loving this. I'm loving this blackboard. I, you know, we, we use the PowerPoint stuff. <laughs> let's say, let's say, Let's say uh -huh. that this circle is symbolic. It represents the body. All right. And the Bible says there is one body. Oh. Amen? Mm -hmm. Anybody not see that in the Bible? Uh -huh. And the Bible says that the body, the church, is his body. Yeah. So now we understand that there's only one body. Mm -hmm. And if there's only one body, then the question is, can that one body? Mm -hmm. uh, I told you that ecclesia is used, the word church. Is used in two senses yeah. in the Bible, in the universal sense. Amen. When Jesus said, I build my church, he's speaking of the universal sense of the church. And then it is used in the local geographical sense. Yeah. Paul says, salute one another with a holy kiss. The churches of Christ yeah. salute you. He's not suggesting that there's a multiplicity of churches well, that belong to Christ. He's talking about members of the same church who worship in different geographic locations. Yeah. Let me help you with that. There's a church of Christ on Elm Street. Yeah. There's a church of Christ on Old Statenville yeah. Road. There's a church of Christ yeah. on yeah. West Hill Avenue. Yeah. Yeah. There's a church yeah. of Christ on Jackson Drive. Yeah. There's a church of Christ yes, on the north side. There's a church of Christ on the west side. Yes, but they all are the same church Thank because you. they all believe the same Thank thing. You. you see, I have to help folks with that sometimes. You know, the Bible says, I think it's Luke chapter 8 verse 10, that the, that the seed is the word of God. Yes, is that right, y'all? No, no, no. If I get a Georgia watermelon mm -hmm. and I cut that Georgia watermelon open yeah. and I take out the seed, that seed has within it Come on. the potent power to produce yeah. a Georgia watermelon. Yeah. That's all it can produce because the fruit bears seed yeah. after its kind. Yeah. And the seed produces fruit yeah. after its kind. Yeah. Uh -huh. The fruit bears seed after its kind uh -huh. and the seed produces fruit after its kind. Right. So a Georgia watermelon will always produce a Georgia watermelon. Right. If I take 50 of those seeds or 49 of those seeds and I go to all 49 of the other states besides Georgia and plant one of those seeds. If I plant one in Florida, if I plant one in, in Alaska, and one in Hawaii, on. and one in Massachusetts, and New York, and New Jersey, and, and, and Delaware, and, and it, so on, and so on, and so on, and so on. If I plant it in the soil, mm -hmm. if I plant a Georgia watermelon seed yeah. in the soil, Come on. regardless of the soil, if it bears fruit, yeah. It is not going to produce a fruit after that state. Uh -huh. The soul has no bearing come on, come on the fruit. Right. If I pour a bottle of water, well, if I pour tap water, uh -huh. if I pour salt water, yeah. the water has no bearing on the fruit. That's right. Because the fruit is produced based on the seed. So if I take the word of God, yeah. if I take the apostles doctrine, preach. no matter where I preach yeah. the apostles doctrine, if I teach it like it is in yeah. the Bible, it will produce yeah. the same thing. Yeah. The word of God has never produced the New Testament, yeah. has never produced anything other than a Christian. Right. It will not produce a Baptist, it will not produce a Methodist. If you get that, there's got to be a hybrid seed. There's got to be something added to the seed to get something other than what the seed will produce. Does that make sense to you? Does that make sense to you? A seed will only produce what is potently designed to produce. All right, come on. And so when you want, when you take this gospel mm -hmm. and preach this gospel in Africa. Those that obey this gospel yeah. will become Christians. Yeah. If you preach this same gospel yeah. in Japan, yeah. they might be summarized, but they'll become Christians. Yeah. If you preach this gospel down in Haiti, yeah. they will become 
Christians. If you preach this gospel over in France, they might have a little croissants with it, but they would, they might be having croissants with the Lord's Supper. You ever thought about that? <laughs> but they'll still be Christians because the word of God will only produce Christians. If you're something other than a Christian, that means you have obeyed something other than the word of God. Listen, listen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, no, no. You need to hear that. If you're a member of a church that says it is a Baptist church, I hate calling names, but I love calling names because I like folks to know what I'm talking about. Amen. You're a member of the Methodist church, that means somebody, somebody. somebody. Has messed with the seed. Yeah. Listen, listen. Yeah. Somebody has messed with the seed. All right. Yeah. If I go out and plant a squash and get a cucumber, which is a squash, <laughs> I better use another example. If I get a tomato, somebody has messed with the seed. Uh -huh. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Watch this. Some say that you can divide the church. Let's just take four divisions. I'm gonna look at the I'm gonna look at, at, at first one chapter one verse ten. And then I'm gonna try to close it with, I'm gonna try to close it with a couple of couple illustrations. Don't tell me that preacher, you know I'm long. <laughs> Brother Lane will be telling me to cut off the lights when I leave. <laughs> Y'all like with this? I know this is a little unorthodox, but I'm trying to help somebody. There's somebody, there's somebody who doesn't understand this. Somebody thinks it's okay. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. I told you, Jesus said, I want you to believe on me according to the apostles' word. Verse 1 says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ. Paul is an apostle. Jesus prayed that we will believe on him through their word, through the apostles' word. So whatever Paul says here, we can believe it. Yes, yes sir. Paul says in verse 10, what did he say? Now I beseech you, brother. Paul said, I beg, I urge. Brother Lane said, I plead. Yes, sir. I implore. Mm -hmm. You brethren. What? By the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. By the authority yes, of our Lord and Savior, Come on. Yes, Jesus Christ. Paul says, I'm an apostle. I have delegated authority yeah. to command certain things. But this thing here Come on. that I'm hearing about down in Corinth is of such an offense yeah. to the very purpose of God Come on. that I've got to appeal to the highest authority. Yeah. And that is the authority of Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. Now you need to understand this tonight. If you're in a church other than the church of Christ, wow. I'm appealing to the very highest authority. That is the authority of Jesus Christ. Amen. The one who hung bread and died. Yeah. Who purchased the church with his own blood. You need to come out of that thing tonight yeah. before it's everlasting and eternally too late. Paul said, I'm pleading with you. I'm begging you. I'm urging you. There's something going on down in Corinth. It's troubling me in my spirit. I can't sleep at night thinking about the divisions and the trouble that's going on down in Corinth. I see something happening. I talked about it over in Acts chapter 20 that after my departure shall grievous wolves enter in, not sparing the flock. And even amongst yourselves shall men arise to draw away disciples of themselves, speaking perverse things. Paul said, I seen this coming. I told my son Timothy, my son Timothy that in the latter days some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrine of devils. I told my son Timothy to preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering doctrine for the time will come when they, they outside, no, they inside the church will not endure sound doctrine, but watch thou in all things, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of your ministry. I see it coming, I see it starting right here in Corinth, and I gotta nip it, I gotta bond it, fight it, I gotta nip it, nip it, nip it, nip it, nip it in the bud. Amen, somebody. Paul said, I got to nip it. You know that bud nip it. You got to nip it in the bud. When that boy starts looking at daddy funny, it's time to nip it in the bud. When that girl starts smelling herself, it's time to nip it in the bud. When that boy, you see them boys hanging around your house, daddy, it's time to nip it in the bud. Amen, somebody. Why is when he start hanging out late, it's time to nip it in the bud. When he don't want to get up and come to Sunday morning, Worship. Yeah. It's time to nip it in the bud. The problem is we don't nip it and then it gets too big and we can't clip it. You gotta learn to nip it in the bud. It's better to deal with it when it's small than to wait till it gets big. If you don't control that boy, daddy, 
while he's small, yes, he must increase and you must decrease. Yes, the sir. day will come when you'll be asking him, can you go outside? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know it's right. The day gonna come when he's gonna be pushing you around. <laughs> you as a son, will you take me outside? <laughs> Son, would you get me a cup? Would you get me a glass of water? <laughs> first Corinthians chapter 1 verse 10, what does the Bible say? They all speak the same thing. He said, first of all, I want you to all speak the same thing. I'm just going to throw some random churches up here. Let's throw the Seven Day Adventists up here. Come on. Let's throw the Baptist church up here. Let's throw the Catholic church up here. Come on. And let's throw the Jehovah's Witness. Now, I strategically chose seven drastically contrary churches uh, to illustrate my point. Paul said, we're going to give denominationalism a litmus test uh -huh. and see if it stands up. Come on. Come if you're of the, of the opinion uh -huh. that it's okay to have different denominations, uh -huh. that God is okay with it. Listen, listen. We're looking at the word of God. Mm -hmm. And Jesus says, I want you to believe on me based on the word of God. Mm -hmm. In other words, your faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. Yeah. If you're saved by grace through faith and you're clinging to your faith, your faith must have your faith must be based on the word of God. And if you find that what you believe is not upheld by the word of God, then you've got a faith that can't be trusted. When I went to the army, they asked you what faith thought you. Ain't that something to ask a man? Are you Protestant or Catholic? Well, I said, no, I'm neither. I'm a heathen. Amen, somebody. <laughs> <laughs> you might as well be lost. Because you just as lost. <laughs> At least I was lost and knew it. Yeah. But when you don't know you're lost, it's hard to get found. Yes, sir. Oh, Lord, help Amen. me. Jesus. <laughs> Come on, Owen. That you all speak the same thing. That simply means that when it comes to preaching and teaching, we ought to teach and preach the same thing. The seven day Adventists teach that we ought to go to church on Saturday or go to worship on Saturday. Come on, come on. The Baptists teach that baptism is an outward show of inward grace. Come on. The Jehovah's Witness teach that only 144,000 people will go to heaven and the rest will remain on the earth that Peter has declared in no uncertain terms shall be dissolved. And the Catholic teach that the Pope is the head of the church. Now, those are different things, but let me show you this here. The Baptists believe that Jesus is the head of the church in heaven, but there's a man who's the head of the church here on earth. Come on. I don't know what the seven day Venice believe. <laughs> I think that's a minus one. What do you think? <laughs> Read. There will be no division among you. No division. The word division means to divide. The word is schism. Schismatical, I believe. Come on. In the original. When you go to the bank and you want some money, you got a hundred dollar bill, and you tell them you want change. The teller will ask you what denominations do you want? Come on, bro. I want you to understand Come that on. division and denomination are terms that are synonymous. One with another. The Bible says that there can be no divisions in no uncertain terms. Paul says, I don't want there to be any divisions amongst you. That means if there's four divisions, at least three of them is wrong. Well, well. You can't get two different people saying two different things about the same thing and both be right. That's right. That's right. No. If you're married, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Now, you can agree to disagree with people, yeah. but you can't agree to disagree with God. Amen. Agreeing to, to disagree, it only works upon, amongst people who are on the same level. But God is not on our level. God is right whether you agree. The Bible says, for what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the truth of God of none effect? God forbid. Yea, let God be what? True. True. And every man. All right. If God says no divisions and you said one division, then you're a liar and God is right. Yes, That's sir. right. That's yes, right. Preach, brother. Come on. I see I'm trying to find a simple way to illustrate it. I'm, I'm going on, Nicky. Take your yeah, time. Take your time. Because <laughs> uh, I have to reason with folks. Yeah. If God tells you what he wants, mm -hmm. then how can we offer him in a good conscience something other than what he asks for? Yeah, right. Right. If God says, I want one church not divided, how can we then with a clear conscience offer God something other than that? Mm -hmm. 
I'm married. And, I, and my wife and I, we don't do uh, surprises. And, and, and now, this don't work for everybody, but it works for the normal. <laughs> it's all right. We don't do surprises. When birthdays come, Christmas come, we don't celebrate Christmas. We show celebrate them. We, do, we give them gifts. <laughs> we don't celebrate Christmas as a religious holiday, but it's a nice secular holiday. I ain't never volunteered to go to work because it's Christmas. <laughs> I'll take any day off with pay I can get. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It can be all kind of day. If I get a day off of work, I'll take it off. Praise the Lord, somebody help me, Jesus. <laughs> but I asked my wife, what do you want? Uh-huh. For Christmas, or what do you want for your birthday? She said, I'll let you know. Mm-hmm. Now, when my wife tells me what she wants, it becomes my singular purpose. Mm-hmm. I am driven to get that which she has told me she wants. If she tells me she wants an ABC, there's no way I can expect to come in the house with an XYZ. And expect to be blessed. Yeah, and I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> Anybody with any common sense know what I'm talking about. Right. She said, ABC. And I said, well, X, Y, Z is just as good. Yeah, well. Okay. <laughs> Keep trying that. See what happens. <laughs> that there be no divisions amongst you. Uh-huh. Read. Let's be perfect to join together. Uh huh. In the same mind. That you have the same mind. You believe the same thing. They don't believe the same thing. There's somebody here tonight that don't believe what I'm saying tonight, which is proof that somebody's not reading the same book. Because if we're reading the same book, which he goes on to say, and of the same judgment, some say, that means the same purpose. If we are to have the same purpose, that means we ought to be working together for the coming cause of doing what Jesus said do. And Jesus says, I want them all to be one. Amen. So that's two more minuses. Well, uh, Lord, that's a crazy one. That's minus four. All right. They miss four. Out of four, somebody said, well, you're not talking about denominationalism. Let's prove it. Go ahead and read the next couple of verses. Well, if they plan me, Paul said, I'm not making this up. Yeah. Of you, my brother. He said, I'm going to tell you, this is somebody talking. I like Paul. Because uh, Brother said he doesn't come to us like some people who say, somebody told me. Yeah. Well, Paul said, I'm going to tell you exactly who told me. Yeah. Come on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to give you verifiable proof yeah. that what I heard is true. Right. It's been told to me by them in the household clothes uh-huh. that it be contentious among you. That there are contentions among you, and you know that's how you get that's how you get problems. Martin Luther, Martin Luther had some issues with the Catholic Church, yeah. and he nailed his ninety-five theses on the cathedral door, starting what is known as uh, the the Reformation period. The Reformation period was an effort to reform an apostate church. The Catholic Church was an apostate church. A man now has the Church of Christ that God has established, and then he has that apostate church, the Roman Catholic Church, which ultimately split into two churches, the Roman Catholic Church and the Eastern Orthodox Church. But Martin Luther and his 95 Theses wanted to fix what was wrong with the, with the, the Roman Catholic Church. And out of that grew the Protestant Reformation. The Protestant Reformation sprung the Lutheran Church, the Baptist Church, the Episcopalian Church, the Presbyterian Church, and every Protestant denomination that you read about has grown out of the Protestant Reformation. Man had a choice. Man could either repent and go back to the church that's in the Bible or start a new church. And I guarantee if you leave it up to man, he'll do the wrong thing every time. Instead of man going back and being the church that is in the Bible, man decided he could improve upon what God had started. The problem is the church he's trying to fix yeah. is the Catholic church and that is a bad place to start. Yeah. You got to go back to the Bible. Yeah. 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 And that's been our plea. Do Bible things in Bible ways. Call Bible things in by, and by Bible names, uh, speak where the Bible speaks, be silent where the Bible is silent. Yeah. No creed but Christ, no word, no doctrine but the word of God. That's, it. that's been our plea. Yeah. All we're trying to do is help men and women go back to the Bible. I'm going to finish up right here. Now, I'm going to show you that Paul, although he's talking about divisions within the city of Corinth, mm-hmm. that these principles, that the thing that spawned these divisions is the same thing that spawns denominational divisions today. Yeah. 
personalities. Yeah. See, some folks like to be connected to Creflo Dollar. Yeah. See, that's the new thing now. Church Christ, got we got to be careful about these personalities yeah. where men are getting bigger than the cross. Yeah. Where it's no longer Jesus Christ and his church, but it's Eddie Long Ministries. Yeah. Where men are, are flocking to T.D. Jake's ministry. Yeah. Where men are flocking to Benny Hinn. And men are flocking to, to Dennis Swaggart and all these different men. Because they're per, they charismatic leaders. And they're Jimmy, Billy Graham and his son. And all these personalities that men have taken their eyes off the cross. Yes. And start looking toward men. Yeah. Men of God, Jesus says, if I be lifted up, yeah. you want to build a church, lift me up. Yeah. Stop lifting yourself. Every time I see a billboard, it got some man on it. Yes, sir. Yeah. You know what I'm lift him up. You know what I'm Jesus saying? said, I will draw yeah. all men to me. Yeah. And we all need to be careful about that. This is about Jesus. I'm trying to finish, brother. Lane. I'm trying to finish. Take your I want to show this what I'm talking about. Now, Paul goes down. He says, now this is what I mean. Now this I say. This is what I mean. Every one of you says what? I'm a Paul. Now I'm going to show you this is what he's talking about. Right here I'm going to write, I am a Paul. Mm -hmm. Read. I'm a Paulus. I am a Paulus. And I hope a Paulus got two P's. I don't care if it don't. <laughs> <laughs> Read. And I'm Cephas. Cephas is Peter. Uh -huh. All right. Read. And I'm Christ. And I'm Christ. That's the exact same thing. Yeah, right. Some of you are saying, I follow Paul. Yeah. Some of you saying, well, you know, I kind of like the way Paul is breaking the word down. Mm -hmm. Some of you saying, well, you know what, man, Peter, Peter, Peter was the man. I'm going to follow Peter. Oh. Some of you saying, well, I'm just going to follow Christ. At least somebody mm -hmm. has sense enough to say, I ain't following nobody but Christ. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, watch what Paul asks next. Is Christ divided? Is Christ divided? That's a rhetorical question. Come on. He said, is Christ divided? Watch what he says next. Was Paul crucified for you? Was Paul yeah. crucified for you? Was William G. Miller, was, was he crucified for you? Listen. Read. Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? Were you baptized in the name of John Smythe? Listen. If you weren't baptized in the name of John Smythe, why are you in the Baptist church? Yeah. If John Smythe wasn't crucified for you, why are you in his church? Yeah. No, no, no. The Bible says that only Jesus, only Jesus. shed his precious blood yeah. for us. I've got the clothes. Take your time. Tonight I try to help somebody see that it was never God's intention never. for the church to be divided right. into yeah. denominations. No, man. That is satanic at its core. Yes, right. And the devil began a long time to deceive. Yes, he did. Yes, Many he of did. us were born into denominational churches. My mama took me. To a denominational church. I didn't seek that. I was taken to it. Yes. And if it's not for someone who cared enough about my soul mm -hmm. to set up a Bible study yeah. and sit down and share God's word with me, to try to open up the will of God for me. Somebody here tonight, you're here for somebody. Cared enough about you. Amen. Yeah. Well, Amen. David, David, when he saw that shoe on that roof. David should have been out there more. <coughs> but he saw that she was up there bathing. Come on. And he was mesmerized. And he sent somebody to get her. And they brought her to David. And David committed adultery with her. Mm -hmm. Then tried to have her husband mm -hmm. sleep with her to cover it up. Mm -hmm. Couldn't convince him to do it. Plotted his death. David, in one of the songs, wrote later. That I had no man that cared for my soul. All right. It's a sad state to be surrounded by people who are so interested in being your friend that they don't care about your soul. Somebody invited you tonight because they care about your soul. Amen. There's somebody here who's taking a great chance. They know that something that I say may offend you and it may it may cause problems between you and them uh, and your work relationship and your friend relationship or their, or your family relationship. But they love your soul so much they were willing to take that risk. Yeah, you need to let them know you appreciate that. Yeah. They took